Okay, so I'm gonna do a real quick video going over the first layer of extending our functionality of combinational logic from our very basic gates to more of a multifaceted style of gate. So there's gonna be two different types, gonna be multi bit gates and multi way gates. And they both operate in similar principles, but for various different reasons. So let's go ahead and hop into that right now. So multi bit, multi way logic gates is just an extension of what we did in the previous video. Now, in this case, we, real quick, want to take a look at what are these. So, we can use the elementary and composite gates, elementary being and, or, zor, not, composite gates being our multiplexers and demultiplexers, to create even more complex gates that should help shorthand a lot of stuff in the future. So multi-bit is going to take a sequence of bits and pass them through a logical gate. And what I mean by that is we're creating a 16-bit computer, so all of our data that's being passed through, at least most of it, is going to be in the form of 16 bits. So instead of having <coughs> AND gate, one and a zero, making a zero, we'd have something more in the vein of a AND 16. So these little slashes would both have 16. This have a 16, and maybe we'd have like 1100110001. One, one, zero, zero, one, one, zero, 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 one, one, zero, one, zero, one, something like that, along with another 16 bit string here. And we would add all of these together and come up with yet another 16 bit string as the output. So essentially, it's just going to be extending this to take 16 bits, and them all together with another 16 bits to generate a new 16 bits. Instead of having to do it 16 individual times, every single time we want to do this. So essentially, we are just creating a shortcut to simplify this process in the future. Multi-way is similar in that we are taking our existing gates and essentially extending the amount of inputs and outputs that we're dealing with. We'll touch on that more later. Let's go ahead and take a look at the multi-bit gates. So what we're gonna be doing, we have an AND, an OR, a not and a mux. These will be extended out to 16-bit gates. In this example here, we have an AND16. So, if you look at it, we have two 16-bit inputs, A16 and B16, until A is 101010110110110, and then B is this one, I'm not gonna say it again here. But, the way this works is, let's take a look at our most significant bit versus our least significant bit. So the least significant bit being the furthest right one and the most significant bit being our furthest left one. So what it means by least significant is that this is the one that's going to alternate over and over at its lowest point. You can kind of view it, kind of, you count 100 here. We're counting 101 to 102, 103. This is the lowest value in the ones place, constantly counting up and then eventually it would trickle over to the tens place and then eventually to the hundreds place. So the more significance the bit in that numbering system happen, has, the more impact it'd have to adjust. So if I did 101 and I changed that to 102, that's not very significant, but I changed it to 201, that is a significant difference. So that is essentially why we're gonna be counting from right to left as opposed to left to right. So. This will be bit zero, and this will be bit 15. So I'll start here and we'll add these two together. We get zero, and these two together, zero, zero, one, zero, 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 one, zero, zero, one, zero, one, zero, zero. And that adds all 16 bits starting at zero up to 15, thus giving us a 00101001000001000 as our final output. Now, the way that this looks schematic wise is not much different than a typical AND. So we just have this AND here. That's it, that'd be the exact same thing here except this would be A, B, and then out. Now, if I were to represent this in a similar fashion to what you see in the A16, I'd have a slash here, a slash here and here, and they'd all be labeled with a one instead, and that signifies the number of bits being passed through here. So in this case, this A has a one bit, B has a one bit, 
and the out has one bit as well. For ours, we have slashes with 16, indicating that there are 16 bits being passed through on each of these lines. And if you look at the code block over here, you can kind of tell that we have two inputs here of A16, B16, and an out of 16. Now, what you'll have is A equals A, 0, B equals B, 0, and out equals out, 0. In the next line, we now have 1s, you can see ellipses, that means so on and so forth, up till 15. Do 0 through 15, that accommodates all 16 bits. And again, we're just doing this zeros, ones place, twos place, threes place, so on and so forth. Kind of representing the same thing how here is 0, and 1, 2, 3, so on and so forth, up to 15. Now, that is essentially what we do for these multi bit gates. There is a bit of an exception with the MUC 16, in which case in between the B and the out, you would need cell equals cell, indicating our select pins. Now, these will not have this kind of array style notation as they are singular bits. I'll touch on that in a video I'm gonna do after this, which kind of shows me coding up some of these gates. So be patient on that, but I will explain that in a separate video. For now, Let's go ahead and move on to multi-way gates. So these are a little bit layered in how they work. Now, we have three different types. We have an OR 8-way, we have a MUX 4-way 16, along with a MUX 8-way 16 as well, and then a DMUX 4-way, along with a DMUX 8-way. So there's technically five gates, but three styles because the MUX 4-way 16 and 8-way 16 are kind of extensive on each other, as the DMUX 4-way and 8-way are as well. Now, for the OR 8-way, what's happening here is we are taking <coughs> excuse me, eight bits as an input and we want to break that down to a singular output. So what we do is we see apologize for the one through eight as opposed to zero through seven. I'm just counting these bits up the wheel see them in code over here. So we take zero and one, or them together, and we come up with a new output here. Two and three will get outputted or or together with an output. You'll see four and five as a pair, six and seven as a pair, and then we want to take the or one and the or two that you see here, or those together, get a new output, take the four, five, and six, seven, or those together, get a new one, and then finally, or our last ones. Now, <coughs> excuse me, one thing to note here is kind of what's happening. So if you look at it, and we have a zero as the output, that should be pretty easy to tell on what our inputs are because everything is basically addition here. So in order to get a zero as the output, everything must be a zero or everything must be false. And this is the hardware representation of an existential quantifier, you learn this in say discrete mathematics, discrete structures, of everything. So if we just take a look at this and we just call this, oh, Let's just say Q1, disjoin with Q2, disjoin with Q3, disjoin with Q4, so on and so forth. Everything would be false, disjoin with false, disjoin with false, so on and so forth. And that's the only way we have zero as the output. Because in the next quantifier, you need a single input to be true for the entire thing to be true. And that's the same thing here. If I just take this input four, a singular one is going to pass through each of these OR gates. That's a one, and finally, a one is our output. So that's kind of what this is used for, is to determine, really, if we have some input of eight bits, and we want to determine, is that a zero? We can use an OR eight way to sequence every single bit together and determine we have no zeros, or we have one thing that is not a zero. That would be useful. Um, when we get to chapter two and get to the ALU, you'll see it's actual use case coming to bear. But for now, it's just a bunch of OR gates strung together. Moving on to the multiplexers and demultiplexers, there is a specific way that we count the MUXs and DMUXs select pins. And in this, we have N is the total number of select pins. And for the regular MUX, we are going to count from zero up to the number of select pins. Whereas with the demultiplexer, it kind of works in a mirrored way 
just like you look at in schematic, the MUX looks like a right facing triangle, two inputs to an output, or the DMUX is more of a less facing triangle from one input to two outputs. They kind of mirror each other. And the same thing we said of the select pins, where you have number of inputs n minus one counting down up to zero. Now, <coughs> excuse me. If we look at a MUX four way 16, first, one thing to note we'll need to have made the MUX 16 before we can create this. So if you are trying to move on, go ahead and make that gate and then we can try to address making this. It's taking 16 bits, so 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, so on and so forth, and choosing, hey, do I want A, do I want B? But that's just the MUX 16. For MUX 4-way 16, we want to choose between four different inputs and get one output. Now we end up having two select pins because we can kind of view this as tiers. Broken down here we have these two which are tied on the second select pin and we have this one over here which is tied off to the select pin one. So you can kind of view them as columns in a way. Now we have A16, B16, C16, D16, and OUT16 as our 16-bit inputs and our 16-bit output. But if we look cell 0 and cell 1 are 1-bit inputs but it kind of is notated as a 2-bit array. That is more in the line of two 1-bit inputs as opposed to one 16-bit input, like A16. But I digress. One other thing to note is we have A equals A here. Instead of A equals uh, 0 through 15 or A equals A16, not specifying the index like we're here with 0, means that we are passing every bit of that through. So it's passing in all 16 bits at once. So A equals A is saying A equals all 16 bits of A. If you want to do something different, you need to specify the range of bits that you are using. More on that later. But for now, this isn't gonna be too bad. So I'm gonna treat this more like uh, single bit inputs and say that, well, you know what? I'm not gonna treat these as ones and zeros at all. I'm just going to treat select pins as 1 and 0 here. So if we look at it, this 1 comes into this MUX gate signifying that we need to choose B. So B is the output, but it also comes in this MUX 16 specifying that we need to choose D. So we are choosing between B and D, select pin 0 is here, signifying that the output is B. Now if we know that the output in this case is C, then we can just take a look at how this is set up. So we have pairs of A and B, pairs of C and D. Well, we want C, which is the top output. So that means we want zero here, which gives us outputs of A, outputs of C. We want the bottom ones, it means that select pin must one must be one. This gives us C. So this is kind of how the most way where 16 works. Not too bad, nothing too spectacular happening here. So let's go ahead and move on to the MUX 8-way 16, which is just a little bit more complex because we need two MUX 4-way 16s, which we just conveniently made. And then we also need a MUX 16, which we have already made because we would have to have that in order to make the MUX 4-way 16. Now, the difference here is we have the A, B, C, and D from our previous MUX 4-way 16 along with the select pins 0 and 1. Again, same thing here, select 0, select 1. So these are the previous inputs, but now we have an EFGH introduced along with select pin 2. And this kind of adds on the two layer aspect that we have of having two MUX 4 way 16s. Now the cell 0 and cell 1 are still attached just like the previous cell 0, so they will be going in simultaneously. So if we look at it, and treat A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H as pairs. So let's do, I don't know, 0, 1, oh, sorry, 1 as my select pin. So first things first, we want to do the upper parts of the pairs. It's going to be A, C, E, and G. And then we are going to use the lower parts of C and G. So C, 
and G here. And then we have one giving us G as the overall output. Now real quick, I'll do one more with some more random numbers. Just kind of show how this works specifically. Um, let's do zero, zero, um, one. Translate that. So let well, me you know. Let's do one zero one. Or one zero zero. I think one zero zero is going to be good. So one should give us the lower parts. So B, D, F, and H. Zero selectment one is going to give the upper parts, which is B and F. So B, F, and zero is going to give us. So that's how the MUX 8-way 16 works. Again, it's just a, another layer of complexity on top of our already existing MUX 4-way 16, which is an add layer of complexity on top of our MUX 16, which is an add layer on top of our regular MUX. So again, this is just adding layers of abstraction to make our life significantly more convenient over the traditional MUX. So it's giving us a lot more extensive functionality based on an existing MUX which we made based off existing NAND gates. So again, the whole process is starting with a basic NAND gate and building up layers and layers of complexity and abstraction to give us some more feasible functioning computer as opposed to just uh, thousands of NAND gates. So let's kind of go here. Now, clean the code, one last thing to look at is a cell equals cell zero dot dot one. That is this. And the reason we need this is we are passing an A, B, C, D, and two select pins from our three select pins into a MUX 4A16, which if we look back, every MUX 4A16 is going to need four 16-bit inputs and two select bits. And it's gonna have some out of 16 just like this has a 16-bit output. So that's kind of how that works. Shouldn't be too difficult to understand that. But again, if it is, I will have a video of me going through this step by step to kind of explain the entire process. Now, I digress and move on to, this is gonna be the last thing I have schematic-wise. I didn't do a DMUX eight-way schematic because it's something I wanted to have you guys do more organically as opposed to just reading schematics which can be pretty boring and isn't going to be exemplary and getting you guys to understand how to do this on your own. But I digress. If we look at it, we pass in zero, just like any DMUX, it's gonna print out two zeros. And that will then print out more two zeros, regardless of what the select pins are at all. Now, let's take a look real quick at passing in a one. So passing in a one, we're gonna end up in some format of zero one zero zero one zero 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 one zero 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 one. So the one is gonna be placed in some specific location based on what the select pins are. So if we do, let's say, um, yeah, if we do zero zero and that is going to give us the results of one and zero, which gives us the results of one, zero, zero, zero. So that shouldn't be too bad. And then conversely, we can look at, hmm, let's change this to one zero, this now gives us zero one, one zero, and zero zero. So again, just location matters a lot in terms of how all this works. So that's what those guys want. But essentially for DMUX, of any layer of complexity is going to be depicting where in the overall file sequence does the one exist and this will continue for eight way because again we just have this one so it is going to be placed into a two bit output and it's going to be on top or bottom depending on what our select pin is so 
that is pretty much all I got for the multi bits and multi way logic gates. But essentially, the whole thing is taking our existing functionality and adding layers of complexity which I've already stated that but again just trying to drive the whole point home is we already have a functioning system we know that it's boolean or functionally complete and we can do whatever we want with it this is just a process of actually doing something with it this being adding the ability to handle larger amounts of data all at once and in the next chapter we're going to eventually combine a lot of those assets these muxes with those like if statements passing through lots of swaths of data, doing operations on actual numbers instead of just ones and zeros. We'll translate those into 16-bit decimal values like 24, 28, make an adder. So you can do like 28 plus 46 as an actual function with logic gates. So just a lot of stuff eventually culminating in an arithmetic logic unit, which is a complex, high-level combinational logic gate essentially but it is something that will be very critical when we want to make a cpu because it handles all of our actual mathematical calculations so that is what you have to look forward to for now i hope you guys learned something and i will see you guys in the next video